I want to talk to you for a little bit in this series that we're starting about joy unspeakable. And um, I want to go to Psalms 101 and 2. This is a very familiar passage of scripture. It's not um, hard to memorize. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. That word lands just means anybody walking the earth, anybody on the earth, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Have you ever felt like not making a joyful noise? Anybody, uh, anybody know that you're not um, real good at singing, so you know you only make a joyful noise? <laughs> I sing tenor, uh, 10 or 20 miles down the road, preferably. And so my wife has me do solos, and she asked me to sing solo. Nobody can hear me. And I want to let you know that in the Bible, you can sing off key. You make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and the Lord loves to hear it. He doesn't put in earplugs and say, let's get some lessons. He loves to hear your song of joy. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the word, the hearing of it, the blessing of it. I don't have to ask it to be anointed because it's anointed already, even with the cover closed. We ask you just to open our hearts and our minds and sow seed of good into good soil today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. It's a beautiful passage of scripture. This Psalms of Joy series. We know these are written by different individuals, but also by David. And then these Psalms, he says, serve the Lord with gladness, with a gladness in your heart, and come before his presence with singing. That original word in the Greek is renana, not rihanna, but rena, just chicken to see if you're listening, renana, which doesn't actually mean just singing. It actually means a shout for joy, a joyful voice unto the Lord. And so singing, yes, and triumphing is actually what it says, and, and ringing a cry, a shout for joy. And, and the Old Testament talks about a shout for mastery. It's like whenever you go into battle and everyone shouts on their way into battle. You've seen it in movies where everyone just like starts yelling, you know, and rushes into battle. That's a shout for mastery, a shout for winning. There is a shout for joy in the Bible. Did you know that? And it happens on every single Sunday in this service, in this church, because we believe we ought to come in here and cry and shout and ring out and sing and praise and shout for the Lord. Amen. And make a joyful noise. So the Lord is helping us to understand that praise is not something we do in solitary or in quiet. Praise is something that we do with noise and with worship and with words out of our mouth of hallelujah. You, you can't sit still and praise. You can't be quiet and praise. You can worship and sit still. You can worship God and be quiet. A lot of people confuse worship for praise. But God says, I want both in my house. I want you to not just come in piously and sit here and, and take in the environment and, and, and be still and know that I am God and worship me because worship is based upon knowledge of who he is, but praise is based upon how he has done great things for us. And we don't, we don't have a problem with praise in other places, right? We know when the three-point goes in and the buzzer's going off and we have won, we know what praise is all about. You don't have to be taught how to praise, my friends. You just automatically go, you know, you just let out an exuberant excitement, right? Because your team won. But this is so much more than that. We're talking about the God of all creation here who gave himself in a story for glory to not only bring us into communion with God, but also to take our cross on for, for us. He, he, he died for us. He, 
He bore our sorrows, and now the only thing man made in heaven is the scars that we should have had in our own hands, and our own feet. It's God Almighty becoming flesh, coming to die for us. And in that story, I am grateful, and I have a praise, and I get excited, and I get loud, and I want to make joyous noise unto God. Anybody with me there? <laughs> I got a few. I'll find the rest of you, hopefully. My grandmother, you know, I talk a lot about my grandmother because she led worship for so many years while I just sat on the drums and pretended to be there. And then God got a hold of my heart, and then I was there. But the drums kept me in church, believe it or not. If you get involved with God and you get plugged into community and you get to serving God, the serve will keep you when the heart wants to walk away from God. Believe me, I know what that's like. And so my grandmother would stand here, gray hair, flip open the hymnal, and she would just sing unto the Lord with such a joyous heart. And we were at the point that she retired, and my grandfather and her had gone down south, and my grandfather passed away in Florida, but she moved to stay with my Aunt Beth, and she was declining, and they called the family, and they said, come on down, you know, it's not going to be long. We don't know if it's days, hours, what it's going to be. And so we all went down there. Sarah and I hopped in the car, and we just had a heart to get down there and, and be with her just a little bit longer. And we came into the room, and she's got one of those hospice hospital beds in the room. And then there's another bed next to it. And I, I, I don't try to be a downer here, but I'm just trying to tell you the situation. And we, we came in, and, and there was really no response going on. And uh, she was breathing, but there was no real way to interact with her at that point. And, and they said, well, she's, she's not doing anything for food. She's not even drinking any water. And, and we were like, well, this, this, this looks like the end. She's going to go home to glory. And thank God she has the faith and the walk with God that she's had. And we all were celebrating the stories. But then while we were celebrating the stories, we suddenly decided, that, why, don't we, why don't we sing some songs? Why don't we just worship the Lord? I mean, that's what Grandma would want us to do, right? That's what she led the congregation in for so many years. She led us in worship. So why don't we just return the favor for once and lead her in worship? And, and so we all got a guitar out and it, a guitar a guitar, however you say that in the South, because that's how I still say it. And so we got a guitar out, and we began to worship, and my uncle's a picker and a grinner. So it was like, don't chicka, don't chicka, don't chicka, don't, don't, don't. And every song, it sounds like that, you know. But we still sang, and we sang to the glory of the Lord. It was a joyful noise, probably all of us, but there were some grandkids that had really gotten into music, and some were even almost recording and, and, and different things. They had developed their talent, and then um, they all had different things. Most of them keyboard playing. I was like, hey, would you give me the guitar? I knew like one song on the guitar. And so I said, would you give me the guitar? And I'm like, Grandma, this is a song that we used to sing. And so then we, I started playing um, a particular song, and, and we were just worshiping the Lord together. And, and I, I noticed as I looked over that her foot was tapping the footboard. And I'm like, she hasn't moved for several days. In fact, they had to roll her just to keep her from the bed sores. And I'm like, the hospice nurse is not here, and Grandma's tapping her foot. And I'm like, okay, this is working. We're going to sing some more songs of joy. So we got out the old songs that she used to sing. And I said, Grandma, you remember that old song, I'm Just Warming Up, for that meeting? And Brother Carnley used to sing We called him brother and sister back then. Brother Carnley used to sing it. She sat up in bed. She sat up in bed and went, oh, yeah, I remember that song, and laid back down. I about, they found me in the parking lot. She did not move until we referenced the songs of her heart that she sang unto the Lord, and it gave her strength, and it energized her, and it made her want to sing again. And we began to sing, I'm just warming up for that meeting in the sky. If you think I'm strange, don't wait around for me to change, because I'm just warming up for that meeting in the air. And she was just singing along, and she's tapping the footboard now, and she's waking up, and she's coming alive to the songs of praise. 
days because there was a joy unspeakable that hit that room and she was tapping into the presence of the spirit of God that was in her life. As she began to speak with tongues, I could see it on her lips. She was speaking in tongues and worshiping God and doing all the things that God tells us to do in order to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And that next day she was sitting up eating food and drinking water and had resurged all from a song of praise. A joyful noise unto the Lord. So don't tell me it doesn't work. You can do whatever you want to do. You, 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 you live it out the way you feel to live it out. But I've seen it work. I've been in this long enough to watch whenever people get filled with God's presence and watch years of stress come off their face as they begin speaking in a heavenly language. I've watched it as they get filled with the Holy Ghost. I've watched it as they turn their life around. I've watched it as they see that joy unspeakable come over their life. And I just got a certificate. I would have brought it today if it wasn't so self-serving, but I'm not, I'm not wanting to be like that. But I just got a certificate of 25 years in the ministry from the church organization, the United Pentecostal Church, and I'm thankful for that. And they sent me a certificate, and we put it... <laughs> Sarah and I went and got a frame for it, and I'm still working to get it framed because I do want to hang it on the wall. They'll come take my humble button, but I'm okay with that. But all of those years, I have watched time after time people who have had no hope step into a walk with God and, and turn their life around. Romans 14, 7, 19 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the what? In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Spirit. Same thing. Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit are synonymous. Whosoever that serves Christ is accepted to God and approved of men. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and mutual upbuilding. In other words, in the church, the context here is Paul is trying to teach the Christians to stop judging each other regarding secondary matters of religious practice. Hey man, how many know religion is man-made? How many know relationship with God is his idea? I, I, I had a friend this week say, I don't, I don't like that praising and that tongue stuff. And uh, I'm like, it's in the Bible. You know it's in the Bible, right? And Paul said you should desire gifts. And Paul said, I'm glad I speak in tongues more than you all. You know that's in the Bible. And you know that, uh, but I just don't like the noise and I, I don't like that. And I said, you know what? I understand that, but I would that you would read the Bible some and understand that God loves when his children play before him in praise. God loves when we open our hearts and, and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And religious practices are places where traditions can get built and we can get stuck. And I pray that God releases us from that. And that's what he's trying to do. Just don't judge each other on religious practices about, even in this situation and context, he's saying about food and holy days. And Paul is talking to committed people here. He's talk, in Romans, he's talking to committed people, disciples, and he told them to focus on what comes with the Holy Ghost, which is peace. Everybody say peace, which is upbuilding each other. Building each other up. Well, I'm not here to find out how nice you dressed or what you rolled in in. I'm not here to find out what your, what, what your life is all about. I, I want to know about people. I care. But I'm not here for anything but what the peace of God wants to do in the room, what the Holy Spirit wants to release in us, and how the upbuilding and power of God is. He said, focus on peace and upbuilding and, and not and avoid quarreling. Now, I don't think we have that problem in here where we quarrel a lot. But I squirrel a lot. Sorry. I get one dad joke per sermon. That's it. Peter, in 1 Peter 3 and 8, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he hath caused us to be born again. How many glad you're born again? Amen. Some people say, well, I was just born this way. Well, you need to be born again. Because God has a perfect plan, and, and we love everyone, but that's the thing, is you have to be renewed in Christ Jesus to a living hope, not a dead hope, but a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus, excuse me, Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, keep in heaven, kept in heaven for you. Verse 5, who 
by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Anybody been through some trials? Anybody been through some trials? I'm just asking. Been through a few lately, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perish that perishes through though it is tested by fire may be found and result the to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ though you have not seen him you love him he's saying you didn't you haven't seen Jesus but you still love him and look what he says after that though you do not now see him you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible. The Bible in King James says, un, the joy unspeakable and filled with glory. Obtain the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Though we go through trials, he says, and though you have not seen Jesus, you can love him just the same because you're filled with his spirit. And you have joy unspeakable, and you're full of glory. Amen? Glory in the house is what, we ser- is what we seek for. But also the knowing that that glory and that unspeakable joy points to something. And that's the obtaining of the outcome of our faith, which is the saving of our soul. Amen? How many put your trust in Jesus to believe that God is going to save us? There is a joy in God's presence like nothing else. And David starts to hit this in Psalm 1611. He says, in in thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen? At his right hand. So in the presence of the Lord, that's where we find fullness of joy. Do you need to be filled up today? Is your tank a little bit empty? Is your joy meter a little bit down today? The presence of the Lord, where we were just singing presence, having a little bit of technical difficulties, it's not about the lights, the camera, the microphones. We could shut this all off and go back to the Bible days and still be full of joy and have everything functioning like it was designed to function. God doesn't need all this stuff to fill people with the Holy Ghost. Look at what happened on campuses. They didn't even have enough people to fit them in the, con- in the sanctuaries that they had on these universities, and people were still baptized in the name of the the Lord. They were still being filled with the Holy Ghost. There was something that was happening where God was moving and it put smiles on faces and released burden and years of t- trouble came off of people's lives and c- all kinds of chains were broken and curses were broken off of people's lives and they're speaking in a heavenly language. It's the joy unspeakable that I'm preaching about. The greatest joy is being filled with the Holy Ghost because it comes with righteousness, peace, and joy. Amen. How many, like, don't want that? Anybody, like, I'm good. I don't need any of that. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. So we need God's righteousness. So the only righteousness we have that heaven approves us is what comes with the Holy Spirit in us. Our righteousness, our good works will never do it. In fact, it was finished on the cross. Amen? His work is what accomplished it. So the righteousness that we have is through the Holy Spirit inside us. Amen? And so the peace of God comes and the joy. And that joy is unspeakable, full of glory. So the joy of David in his Psalms is the collection of poems and attributes of King David and and, and it's attributed to God. And there's places in in his Psalms where it shows that David was just a mess. How many know David was a mess? How many know the stories of David? David transgressed as a king. He, he was considered a man after God's own heart. How do, you, how do you stay a man after God's own heart, but yet you have adultery with Bathsheba in 2 Samuel 11? He was looking across the rooftops and saw some live pornography. And he's like, there's, there's a lady. She's probably named Sheba. She's having a bath. I don't know. Bathsheba. That's how you can remember it, just helping you out there. I want to give you some Bible knowledge. Arranged, he arranged the death of her husband. Anybody do that? Anybody commit adultery and then have her husband bumped off? 
No. I mean, this is rough. It's hard to even speak it over a pulpit or a stand with an iPad. Arranging the death of Uriah, Bathsheba's husband in 2 Samuel 11, and then neglecting his duties as a father to discipline his own children in 2 Samuel 13 and 18. And then you get to, to the redemption psalms and songs of David. In 31 of Psalms, he's, he's doing his confession all throughout Psalms 32. And you see it in a beautiful psalm. Understand the, the seriousness of what David did. And yet, here he is, and he's like, when God recovered me, I want to write a song about it. He said, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Hear David in this moment as he's writing these words, and he's coming out of making mistake, and he's coming out of dealing with what he went through, and he's coming out of letting himself fall to sin. And he was adulterous. And you know what the world says, adultery is fun until it's done. That's what the world says. But he's actually realizing that this doesn't work. None of this stuff that I chased after, none of these things that I pursued is going to make me happy. And so then he starts to write, whose sin is covered. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. When he did not confess his sins to God, it just began to work on his physical health. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. Look at how God was working on him. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. In other words, think about it. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity. Iniquity have I not hid. I have, uh, I said, I will confess my transgressions. How many know that's all God wants? If we confess, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Amen. Unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Think about that, or Selah. Ponder it. I just confessed it. And he forgave me and restored me. I, all I did was say, Lord, I'm sorry. Think about the power of that, David is saying. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great water they shall come nigh unto him. Thou art my hidden place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with the songs of deliverance. He wrote songs of deliverance. Because God had delivered him. And then in Psalms 51, he's writing about his repentance to God. These are the Psalms of joy of David, of coming back to God. Have mercy upon me, O God, he says. This is where he's repenting to God for the things that he's done. You see, it wasn't that his heart was perfect. It was that he had a heart that leaned toward God. And it's not that our hearts are perfect, brothers and sisters. It's not that we do everything perfectly or we can be perfect. None of us can be. But we can have hearts that lean into God. And when God says that was not right, we have to say, Lord, you're right. I confess. Please forgive me. If you have a heart that leans in toward God, you have a heart that's after. That's what it's saying. He was a man after God's own heart. He wanted God's heart after he fell and realized this is not the path for me. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Look, he knows God can blot them out. He knows that God can cover them. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression. My sin is ever before me against thee. Thee only have I sinned. He said, against you, God, not anybody else, but against you, God, have I sinned and done this evil in the sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speaketh and be clear when thou judgest. And then he goes, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou dur uh, durest, <laughs> that's a fun word, behold, thou durest, uh, desirest truth, never mind, in the in inner parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me know me to know wisdom. Here's the part that I wanted to get to, verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And then watch what happens when he confesses. 
Are you ready for this? I know there's a lot of reading. Watch. He says, purge me, cleanse me, make me new. And then verse 8, make me to hear joy and gladness. When he walked away from his sin, he found joy and gladness again. And so he began to hear joy and gladness. What an interesting statement that his songs were turned to joy and gladness again. Not confession, not all I've done wrong, not everything that I messed up. But God, you are so good. You are holy. You are righteous. You are above all sin of man. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. And at that point in scripture, we find that David taps into a whole other dispensation. The church dispensation, while he's in the Old Testament, he comes up with an understanding that there's praise and glory and honor that can happen in the house of God. And he begins to make the Ark of the Covenant available to people that want to praise God. No longer do you have to go through a priest or special rituals, but he puts the Ark in David's tabernacle when he brings it back and makes praise available to the people of God. David's repentance plea and forgiveness after his confrontation from Nathan with Psalms 51. And then Psalms 103, David praises God for his compassion and his forgiveness. Those are the places in Psalms where we see Psalms turn to joy. Amen? So David's Psalms reflect an authentic emotion. God's not afraid of our emotions. God's not afraid of our broken places. God's not afraid. You do not surprise God in your brokenness. If he touched you and he saved you, he knew where you were at when he found you. He knew where you would be when you fell. It's not like, God, why would you touch me and then I messed up. He knew that, and he has supplied enough grace and saving power to reach to you. He does not have a shortage. He does not have a lack, brothers and sisters. He has all power and all authority, and he saves us to the uttermost, amen, and we can have unspeakable joy. Would you stand with me together? Despite facing all these trials, David consistently turned to God. I overprepared, and I'm going to continue this next week, but joy is gratitude and remembrance. David's joy stemmed from his gratitude for God's faithfulness. And God's provision. So he says in his psalm of gratefulness, he says, bless the Lord, O my soul. He's back to communion with God. He's back to a place of worship. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He gets a revelation of God's holy name. As he's hearing joy and gladness again in his spirit, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. He's, he's saying, look, God brought me through my mistakes. God brought me through my failures, and my heart is still alive, and my love for God is still here, and my joy is still present, and I want him more today than I wanted him yesterday, who forgiveth all my iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. He's like, he's not just a God of joy and gladness. He heals bodies, and he heals souls, and he heals minds, and he can move anxiety off of you when you get gratitude and he can take depression out of your life when you get gratitude and who redeemeth the life from destruction he redeems your life from destruction amen who crowneth thee with the loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like eagles? The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful. Here his heart poured out as he's been recovered. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. God's not angry at you. He's not angry forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, thank God, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens is high above the earth, so great, hallelujah, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, he said. As far as 
As far as he removed our transgressions from us, if you cannot find it, it's because he removed it. Amen. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. He knows you. He knows you like nobody else knows you. So he says, as for man, his days are as grass, and flower as the flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passes, passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall no be known, shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord, here it is, is from everlasting to everlasting. He said, God is so good that he forgave me all my sins. And I've experienced mercy everlasting. Would you lift your hands with me and thank God for a mercy like that? Jesus, we give you our song of praise. We lift you up in worship today. We want you to be adored. Thank you for the comfort you bring. We're going to sing a praise a song to you right now, God. And we want you to know that our joy is in our worship. We joy through worship and praise. Would you put your hands together? And if you can't clap on beat, that's okay. I'll give thanks to you, Lord, and sing praise to your name almost high. I'll declare your love in the morning and your faith.
Oh, shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you, would you pray with me right now? Would you close your eyes and just pray with me? Would you say, Lord, forgive my sins. Wash me anew. Take away anything that has transgressed against you. Fill my heart with your spirit. Let me be filled with the Holy Ghost and lead me into a life everlasting of gladness and joy. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Why did I pray that prayer? Because when you lay down sin, gladness enters in. When you lay down sin, joy enters in. I hope that you can lay it down. If there's anything in your life you need to lay down, lay it down today. Say, Lord, I am sorry. I repent of my sins. And watch God turn your heart into a heart that chases after him. Amen. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise one more time. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence oh, here today. Lord, how huh? great are your works. You're dismissed. God bless oh, you. Lord, how Fellowship. great are your works. You can come and praise if you'd like. Oh, Lord, how great are your works.